the latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. And we are evolving and we are seeing an amazing opportunity that is happening. Accessibility. Accessibility is, is one of our core values. It's even a part of our mission statement. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to another amazing edition of Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being here each and every single week. Thanks for emailing us to feedback at ami.ca. Thanks for following us on Twitter at Double Tap Canada when using that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap whenever you've got a question. We've got a great show lined up for you today. I am Mark Aflalo. Alongside me, Stephen Scott. Stephen, if there's one thing I can think of during this past year, or a year and a half almost. Is it a year and a half? Uh, kind of. Mm. Um, everybody is watching TV. Yeah. And AMI viewers are no different. Now, we've had an AMI TV app on iOS for quite some time, but today there is big news on the app development side, is there not? That's right. Uh, this is very exciting news. AMI have announced the uh, new Android version of the app, which you can find by searching on the Google Play Store for AMI TV. Uh, that is the uh, name of the app which you can get, you have been able to get on iOS, you can now get on Android phones as well. Now, when it comes to streaming, I think that we've hit a pretty big turning point. And I think thanks to the pandemic, if you want to thank it for something, um, it's probably that, you know, we've seen we've seen the introduction of Disney Plus right before the pandemic. We've seen Paramount, which was, you know, formerly the CBS app. Of course, there's Netflix, Amazon Prime. In Canada, we've got Crave. I mean, there are, there's no shortage of streaming apps and everybody wants to, you know, make sure their audience has access to their programming on their own app. And I think at the end of the day, while this is a lot of competition, the consumer is the winner. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, it's an interesting area because TV is perhaps not something you might think. If you're new to this show, you might think, hang on, why is he asking a blind guy about watching TV? Do blind people watch television? Yes, we do. Uh, and we do it in a multiple ways. You know, we watch on our cable boxes, on our satellite boxes, on our free-to-air, on our TVs, on our iPads. We, we use all of that on our iPhones, our Android phones, everything, basically, we can consume content on. And what's interesting is because these are new and emerging platforms, uh, it's easier for app developers to bring things into the apps that are new that might be more difficult for regular television. So a big issue for us as blind people is audio description. You know, I need audio description in order to watch a TV show. Uh, audio description, if you're unaware, is that an additional voice, an extra layer of audio that is uh, an optional extra on a lot of tracks on Netflix, on Amazon Prime Video, uh, you might see the English audio description or English-French audio description option and wonder what on earth that is. It's that second uh, voice, if you like, the voice as I think about it often on my shoulder, uh, that is telling me what's going on on screen. Uh, so when something's on screen, something's happening, it's a quiet scene, there's no one speaking, no one's explaining what's going on. I love my horror movies, Mark. So, you know, uh, suddenly someone's creeping up and something's going to happen. Well, I don't have a clue what's going on. To me, it's just silence and some footsteps. But that additional voice gives me that information. It tells me what's going on on screen. Now, that's really important. But imp implementation of audio description on a lot of platforms has been difficult on legacy cable boxes and such like, especially when it comes to on-demand services. Whereas with apps, it's available you know, in so many different and so much easier ways because it's easier for app developers today to build that into the, the products. And that is a really important area for us. It makes more of the content available via the phone and via the iPad accessible to blind people, which is fantastic. Now, do you think that gives people who use and consume their media on an app a little bit more of an advantage because we know on the TV side of things and we talked about this several weeks ago when we talked about big screen TVs is that they're kind of limited yes they're giant tablets these days you know you've got a giant screen with an operating system behind it but they're yeah. limited in terms of the fact that they go up on your wall and they stay there for four or five years so you can't necessarily upgrade it as quickly or as easily as you could an app so does that give people who use an app an edge over the people who are watching on TV I think it does because ultimately and this is the other key point, the access route to the app is more accessible on a phone, 
and on an iPad versus a television. Now, when we talked about big screen TVs, you might remember I talked about some of the challenges of using the apps, trying to get to a third party app, that app itself being accessible. There's a lot of barriers still in the way. And the problem is if you can't open the front door, you're never going to get inside and be able to enjoy what's going on in there. Whereas with a smartphone, you are able to get in because there's all the accessibility to help you get there. And then the apps themselves are accessible. And now there are, of course, a lot of issues around accessibility on apps like Paramount Plus, for example. That's a, a one that's come up before. Um, I think HBO Max in the States as well had issues around audio description not being there. So it's not all perfect. There's still, you know, it's still a bit of a patchwork affair. But at the same token, the, the foundations are there to make more accessible apps, put audio description in there, all of that. So, you know, a lot of people for that reason are enjoying watching their TV on their device. And also, bear in mind, if you're completely blind, you're probably better off in some ways watching the latest episode of whatever it might be on the phone because you can just put the phone in your pocket, pop in your earbuds and enjoy the show. And almost like you're listening to the radio. You know, we talked when we did talk about TVs, we you know, they are making major strides in terms of adding accessibility. And I think that has to do with the evolution of just the technology itself that goes behind the TVs. You can add more storage for lower costs. So you can actually add more of those tablet like or, or you know app like features into the TVs, which is a great and it's kudos to those manufacturers. But, you know, when it comes to designing an app to consume the media, people tend to go for iOS first. And, and I think I know the answer to this question, but do you think it's because Apple makes it easier to develop those apps and, and give people the tools versus Android? I think that's partly true. I, I, there is truth in that, for sure. And also, there is statistics that prove that there are more people who are blind using iPhone than there are using Android. However... Android is, is a bit of a nightmare as well in some ways because there are so many variants of Android uh, out there uh, and there are so many different devices that you have to make sure the apps work on. So from a developer's perspective, it's obviously going to be a lot easier to create one app that they know they can push out and it will work on every single iPhone that's out there versus putting it out there and maybe it only works on LG or it only works on Samsung or it only works on whatever. That's the problem you face with Android. It's a bigger challenge for developers. It's much easier to start on iOS. Uh, but like AMI have done uh, here, we've decided, right, it's time to you know move on to the new platform. And there are some reasons for that, which we're going to get into today with our guest. Uh, and um, yeah, I think it's a really interesting story. So when you get an app like this, um, which we received in beta form before it was actually released, what are your criteria? What do you look at when you're looking for an app like this, you know, in terms of accessibility, but also just in terms of basic function. Well, that's it, right? It's accessibility, which is, you know, the navigation, how easy is it to move around the app? How easy is it to find what I'm trying to get to? And that usability, you know, if I, if it takes me 15 swipes to get to the, the, the featured item on that homepage that you as a viewer, as someone who's, who's sighted would look at Mark and say, oh, that's the, that's the featured show this week. If it takes me 15 swipes to get there, that's not very usable, is it? Uh, so you have to build that into it. It's more than just, oh, it's accessible. Because lots of apps are accessible, but how usable are they? Um, am I Are my fingers knackered by, by the end of it because I've gone swipe, swipe, swipe to get to what I'm trying to get to? So these are the things I'm looking for. I'm looking at you know how usable it is, uh, obviously making sure that all the buttons are labeled. I would have no doubt in my mind that would be the case with this app. Uh, but making sure, you know, when a, when a button says, for example, shows, uh, it might say shows on the screen. But when I press that button, does it feed that back audibly to me? Or does it just say the word, the dreaded word button? Uh, and if it does that, then obviously we have a problem. But that, again, is about feedback and about going back. And, of course, we saw this in beta form. We we're really impressed so far. Uh, we'll be interested to hear what other people think. You know, the first flaw I think in this in this whole process here is they've picked the one person who doesn't use Android <laughs> to test the Android app. <laughs> now, this is either going to be very, very successful or it's going to be a great opportunity to really point out the flaws that might exist in the app before it hits the market. Flaws? What are you talking about, Mark? AMI make the best apps ever. Sorry, bosses. I don't know who this guy is. Um, he's clearly I, insane. I meant the flaws in Android. Oh, you, you're okay. so paranoid about what we're talking about here. <laughs> My God. Well, look, you know, I, I work with you. I've got reason to be. 
<laughs> oh, great. Thanks. Okay, guys, here, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. You're going to dive into the actual app later in the show. Yeah. You're going to walk people through it. We're going to show them what might be different on the Android side versus the iOS side. But I think a lot of this is about familiarity. So if you have used the iOS side, hopefully the experience is very similar on the Android side. But before we dive into that, it's important to get some context and to speak to some of the people behind the creation of the app and understand why now is the time to switch to Android or to make the Android version and what excitement developments are on, you know, expected for us down the road, right? Absolutely. That's the key, right? I mean, we've got to know the history of this. And, you know, I want to get into this about, you know, why is it taking so long for it to get from iOS to Android? There are a lot of people out there who would enjoy the content. So why is it taking so long? That's what I want to dig into. Well, we'll find out that, well, we'll get the answer to that question for Virginia Villetta, who's the Director of Digital Strategy at AMI Accessible Media Inc. We take a quick break and come back with Virginia after this here on Double Tap TV. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash double tap. is Double Tap TV. We are back on Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being here. You're going to have a lot of questions, I guarantee it. So write down the email address, feedback at ami.ca. And of course, reach out to us on Twitter. It is at Double Tap Canada with that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. Why are you going to have a lot of questions? Because you're going to want to know where you can find the brand new AMI TV Android app. And the answer to that question is quite simple, the Google Play Store. Stephen Scott is standing by with our next guest, who is the Director of Digital Strategy at Accessible Media. Stephen, to you. Thank you, Mark. And uh, Virginia, it is great to have you here on Double Tap TV. Now, this app is not new at all. As we've said already, it's been on the iOS platform for a while now. Talk us through how this app was built and how it has taken the time it has to get it onto Android. It started, I think, back in 2017. Everything that we do in, in the organization is, is driven by research and, and conversations with our audience. Um, so back then we, we started to hear, you know, we had this wonderful website, but the audience really wanted mobile apps, you know, something that was, that was native, that they could use with assistive technology and they could take with them. Um, so that led us to look into you know, where, where is the audience in, in terms of you know, handset adoption? Um, we found that within our, within our audience sort of converse to the general population, um, the majority of our audience were using Apple devices. Um, so you know, we decided, okay, with the resources that we have, we will start with you know, developing an iOS um, application. Um, at that stage, you know, we didn't have development in-house. So we, you know, we partnered with third-party companies to help us develop that application and you know, release that app um, in 2018. Um, we had always intended to uh, release an Android app, but we wanted to take a little bit more time to develop both our in-house capabilities to do that, because I think that's a much more sustainable way of being able to develop and, and um, support applications over time. Um, but also to take the time to really thoroughly develop, design, and test the application on the Android platform, because as most people know, it's it's a much wider um, market. There are many more handsets available. There's a lot of permutations to um, the assistive technology and the handsets and the peripherals that come into play there. So it was it, it was a factor of of wanting to spend the time and the effort to make sure that we were testing and developing a product that that really responds to our audience's needs. Now, by bringing the development of the app in house, Virginia, does does that mean that you're able to think about rolling the app out onto other platforms, not just mobile, but I'm thinking about smart TV and so on. That's actually um, something that we're really excited about. Uh, and I was talking to my team um, just last week and sort of, because we're, we're at the point of launching and I was ref we were reflecting what we've learned as, as part of this um, project. And one of the things we've, we've all reflected on is the opportunity to really work closely with members of the community um, to test and understand assistive technology has really helped us internalize um, uh, what it's like to develop um, in, a, in an environment where you're using assistive technologies uh, and really to sort of develop that empathy and internalize um, the development mindset, um, as well as um, just learning about the developments in assistive technology itself, um, gesture technology on the Android platform. You know, we, we kind of looked at that as, is that how the, you know, 
the lines are blurring between the sighted and the non-sighted community in terms of interactions with handsets. So we're intrigued to sort of follow that over time and see where that goes. You know, it's important to say that the new app on the Android platform is pretty much exactly the same as the iOS one. There's no difference here in one or the other. The development is, is merely about expanding the reach of this app onto another platform, in this case, Android. For those who haven't downloaded it already, though, on, on either platform, can you talk us through some of the, the features on there? First off, when you when you first encounter both of our apps, there is an onboarding video. We, were, we wanted to make sure that um, people who are trying the app for the first time are comfortable and know what they're being presented with from the very get-go. So there is a, a very well-presented, uh, produced um, onboarding video that takes you through all of the key features. Um, so you, the, the, the navigation of the screen, what, you, what each of the buttons will give you, and a very well-described um, explanation of what the app will give you. Um, but the, yes, the, the apps are the same. They are presenting all of AMI's great original content. Um, so full shows, documentaries, digital exclusives, um, allowing you to browse the, the library of content, to be able to watch, uh, to be able to download. If you want to watch you know, offline, if you're traveling somewhere or, uh, or you, know, you just want to watch um, offline, uh, so you can download the content to view um, at any time. Um, one of the things we wanted to, to make sure is that uh, people you, who use the apps can use them wherever, whenever, and however they want. And I'm going to be road testing it right here on Double Tap TV shortly, so hang around for that, folks. Uh, but first, Virginia, remind us how people can get the app. The Android app will be available on the Play Store on March 31st. Um, the iOS app is available on the Apple Store uh, today, um, so we in invite all of our users to check out the apps um, at their leisure. And can I just ask just one more question about feedback? Do you welcome users getting in touch with their thoughts on the app? You know, I'm thinking here about potential accessibility improvements that people might offer, that kind of thing. Yeah, we definitely invite feedback. If you have an idea or if you have a comment about the, the apps or indeed the websites, um, feel free to reach out to us at info at ami.ca. Uh, there is a link to that address in the apps and the help screen if you are looking to, to go there, or feel free to check out our website. That is Virginia Valletta, Director of Digital Strategy at Accessible Media. Thank you for joining us here in Double Tap TV and of course, talking about the all new AMI TV app for Android. So Stephen, up next, you're going to give us, you're going to go in the driver's seat. You're going to drive us through the brand new AMI TV Android app. Are you up for it? Are you ready to go here? I, I'm just dusting off the uh, the uh, Google Pixel 5 here, so we should all be ready to go. Okay, as the dust settles, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back, and Stephen Scott is going to dive in to that AMI TV Android app. He is Stephen Scott. I'm Mark Aflalo. We're back in just a moment here on Double Tap TV. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit AMI.ca slash Double Tap. This is Double Tap TV. We are back on Double Tap TV. Thank you so much for being here. Again, feedback at AMI.ca, the email address, and follow us on Twitter. It is at Double Tap Canada. And if you want to get in touch, use that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. Mark Aflalo and Stephen Scott with you. Stephen, you're in the driver's seat and you're ready to test the brand new AMI TV Android app. So I've dusted off my trusty Google Pixel 5 and I thought I would show you the uh, AMI app. Now, I've already launched the app, but when you launch it, you'll get a tutorial, or at least the option to watch a tutorial on how to use the app. It's a two minute video, it's really helpful. Uh, but if you miss it, don't worry, I'll, I'll tell you how you can get back to it. So let's log in uh, and just go to the AMI app here. So I'm getting the exclusive beta version here, which gives me access to some of the under the hood stuff that's going on, uh, hence why it says that at the top. But yes, this is me inside the AMI app. And in here, uh, as you heard earlier from Virginia, you're going to get all the wonderful AMI original content, including Double Tap TV, right here inside this app. Uh, so let me just navigate around a bit. Search button. Double Tap to activate. So really easy, nice search button. If I want to search for Double Tap TV, hint, hint. Content types, heading. Okay, so this is going to be a, a heading, which is great. That's told me that it's a heading, which is really cool, actually, because it means I can search by heading to move around and navigate around this app, which is really helpful. We'll do that in a moment. But let's see what content types they are. I'll just swipe to the right. Shows button. Uh, okay, shows. Documentaries. Button. Documentaries. Digital shorts. Button. Digital shorts. Featured. Heading. Featured. 
OK, so I've moved on to a new heading. That means I've moved on to another section, clearly. And if I want to, on Android, of course, with the new build of 9.1, the version of TopBack that is now running, uh, you can just swipe down, then up. Links. And that will let you change the links. You can do it by headings. I've done it by links and I've actually activated something. I'm going to go back with the traditional swipe gesture of down, then left. So I'm now back there, and uh, yeah, let's let's just start navigating by heading. So I'm going to swipe up and down, Controls. and again, headings. and that's swipe me now. Swipe down to read by headings. Yeah, exactly. I'm now able to swipe up and down and read by headings. So let's do that. Recently added heading added list. So I'm swiping up. That takes me to the recently added. So that's the new shows they've added to the app. Featured heading. Featured new programs that might want to be featured. Content types heading. And the types of content. So really simple navigation, and and that's it really. That's the main. Thing about the app, it's it's just getting you the easy access to the content, right? Now there are some options along the bottom. Let's go through them. Selected browse tab. So that's our Double browse, tab which is our I guess our home screen. Offline tab. And offline means you're able to save your shows and watch them online. So if you don't want to watch them, you know, on your Wi-Fi allowance, or perhaps you're going on the move, maybe you've got a bus journey coming up or a tra train journey coming up at some point, you're very easy. Uh, you can just easily download the program uh, and watch it offline. View tab. Shows you've watched already, which is great. And, and the great thing is you can tell your friends about that through the app as well. Settings, tab. Uh, settings is pretty cool. So if we go in here, settings, tab. Selected. Okay. there are some key features that we can look at. So, for example, let's go to the top of the screen Accessibility here. Settings. Accessibility settings. Closed captioning, on screen captions. Closed captioning, on screen captions. So that's great. So that means I'm able to turn on the closed captioning if I need that, which is brilliant. Tipped, switch. Network settings. Download only on Wi-Fi. Download offline content on a Wi-Fi connection. And that means exactly as it says, download only on Wi-Fi, uh, which means that it won't be using your uh, cellular plan when you're out on the move. Again, that's really important. There are lots of other settings in there. Some of these are specific to the app itself. Some settings for the app that you maybe don't have to worry about too much. Let's come out of that. Okay, so I'm back to the home screen. And there's this final tab. And this is help. And this is the really useful tab, if I'm honest. You often see help inside an app and you tend to ignore it and avoid it. This is one to be aware of. Go in help, here. And what app. this will do is this Suppress. will give you full information about the app, uh, how to use the app as well, how to navigate around it. So if you are concerned or unsure, go straight to that help tab on the bottom right of the screen and that will give you all the information you need. So let's go through this. The browse screen. To browse the library of media, tap browse in the bottom navigation on the left side of the screen. This screen is where you find the full library of Amaze Media. The media is organized by shows, documentaries, and digital shorts. So you're getting the idea, right? So it's giving you the information of what each browse, in particular the browse tab is for, what offline is for, what viewed is for. It's giving you all that information. It's also giving you the ability on here, on this page, to watch the tutorial video again. So if you've missed it, uh, or you, know, you, you maybe chose not to watch it when you first launched the app, don't worry, you just go back into help and enable the tutorial. Just watch the tutorial, it's a two minute video, and it just gives you all the information you need to know about the app. You know, one thing I love about this app is its simplicity, Screen but up. also it is a fully accessible app as well. I'm just gonna put my phone down there and keep it hopefully quiet for the rest of the segment. But I, I just wanna say, you know, it really is a, a brilliant app. It's available on iOS as well, it's really important to know that, but it is now available on the Google Play Store, and as you can tell, it's fully accessible, Mark. Lots of great stuff there on the AMI-TV Android app. You can get it right now if you head over to Google Play Store. Just search for AMI and I guarantee you'll find it there. A good opportunity for you to catch up on all the great original programming, especially Double Tap TV. Steven, thank you for that incredible walkthrough. I am Mark Aflalo. On behalf of all of us here at Double Tap TV, we'll catch you again next week or on the AMI-TV Android app. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. Hosted by Mark Aflalo and Stephen Scott. Editing, Will Latar. Production assistants, Wendy Kaufman. Content review, Zachary Aflalo. Social media, Andy Wynn. Segment producer, Sean Priest. Voiceover, Anna Vicino. Integrated described video specialist, Ron Rickford. Coordinating producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director, production, Karen Nye. Director, programming, Brian Perdue. VP, content development and programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2021, Accessible Media, Inc.